Hello and welcome to this video, Building Your First Logi Dashboard Advanced Topics. If you're here, hopefully you've had the chance to watch our other video on building your first Logi Dashboard. This video will add advanced customizations to the dashboard we built there. Let's get started. Let's now review how we can add some filters to the panel to let the user analyze the data from the dashboard. To add a filter, we need to add the panel parameters element under the panel. Let's create a dropdown for product subcategory. We'll add an input select list element under panel parameters. Now let's add a SQL data layer to get the list of product subcategories from the database. We'll also need to define our caption, ID, and values in the input select list. We'll also change include blank to true and include blank value to negative one. Finally, we need to change our query for the heat map to take a subcategory as an input to filter the data. We'll do this by adding a filter for product subcategory. Now let's run our report and see how we can filter the data. Now the data is filtered. Let's now review how we can give the user the flexibility to change the layout of their dashboard. Setting the dashboard to adjustable and having tabs gives the user the ability to add, remove, and rearrange the tabs. Now that we have set these properties, let's review how the user can change his or her layout from the dashboard. The user can now rearrange their tabs from the dashboard. By clicking the settings icon, the user can rename or remove the tab and change the layout. The user can also add another tab. Changing the layout allows the user to define the number of columns for the tab layout. When a user customizes his or her dashboard at runtime, it's possible to save these customizations for future use. To do that, update the save file attribute and provide a physical path for saving the file. Add a username to the file name to create a file per user. It generates an XML file that contains details of the layout of the dashboard for the user. The XML file lists the panels in the user's dashboard and the layout selected by the user. The dashboard element also supports adding additional panels using the gallery file element. The gallery file is created using an analysis grid and can be copied, moved, and shared between Logi applications and users, providing an independent collection of visualizations as a resource. The extra gallery file element allows you to specify additional gallery files. When multiple gallery files have been specified and the user is adding panels to the dashboard, they'll be able to select them from the different visual galleries. To add the gallery file, add the extra gallery file element. The gallery file path needs to point to the previously created gallery file. I have an analysis grid, and in my analysis grid, I have created a chart to show count of orders by product. This chart has been added to the visual gallery, which creates a gallery file. I am now adding the path to this gallery file in my dashboard. Now when I view my panels for the dashboard, it shows the chart created in Analysis Grid seamlessly as part of the dashboard element. I can add it to the dashboard easily. Also note that multiple gallery files can be included as part of the dashboard. There's also another interesting way to share gallery visualizations. The extra gallery file elements gallery file attribute can be configured to point to a regular Logi report definition file. If that definition file includes a dashboard element with a child panel elements containing visualizations, 
The application will locate those panels in the definition and also make them available in the visual gallery. I have another dashboard logi report. In this, I have a single panel which is a bubble chart. Let's refer to this file in the gallery file attribute. Now let's run this dashboard. We can add the bubble chart to the dashboard. There it is. Now let's run our original dashboard again. Here we see the option to add the panel from the additional dashboard file. Now we see it on the dashboard. The dashboard allows automatically saving any changes to the user dashboard using the auto bookmark functionality. To enable auto bookmark, add the auto bookmark element under the dashboard. Define the bookmark collection and the bookmark ID. If auto bookmark is added, the save file attribute needs to be blank. Define the path for the bookmark folder in the settings file. To run the report for the first time, the report needs to be loaded with the parameter and rd new bookmark equals true in the query string. This would create a new bookmark file in the bookmark folder. To subsequently load the user report, the report needs to be loaded with the parameter and rd load bookmark equals true. This will load the last autosave version of the dashboard with the user specific panels and layout. When auto bookmarks are in use, the undo and redo icons will appear beside the tabs. You may want all of your users to start using the dashboard with the exact same predefined tab and panel arrangement. A default arrangement can be saved for later use by working with the dashboard element attributes save file and save file starter. If a file is specified in the save file starter attribute and no save file has been created yet, then the save file starter file will provide the initial dashboard configuration. To create a default panel and tab arrangement, configure the dashboard element's save file attribute with a value that will create a separate file for each user. Run the application and create and arrange the tabs, panels, and panel parameters desired for your default arrangement. In the file system, find the save file that was just created during your session and copy it to the support files folder. Rename the copy using a meaningful name, such as dashboard default. Back in the studio, configure the dashboard element save file starter attribute with the complete path and file name of your renamed save file copy. All first time users will now see the default dashboard arrangement and any customizations they're allowed to make will be saved for their next session. Dashboards are often used to display time sensitive or transactional data and it's very useful to be able to update the dashboard panel contents periodically and automatically. This can be accomplished using the refresh element timer element. All of the following attributes are required for this element. First is element ID, which specifies the ID of the element that you want to periodically refresh. Multiple IDs separated by commas can be entered, but the scope of each timer element is limited to its own panel. The second element is ID, which specifies a unique element ID. The last is refresh interval, which specifies the amount of time in seconds between refreshes of the element specified in element ID. Use caution when specifying a very short interval if a large number of users will access this dashboard. Database server performance could be seriously impacted. We are specifying a short interval just for testing purposes. The refresh element timer element works by rerunning the panel's report with just those elements that are to be refreshed.
Every five seconds, we see that the Sales by Category report is refreshed. Thank you for joining us in this video walking you through some of the advanced ways to customize your Logi dashboard. Have a great day!